about how to build a hundred year old mini barn and we'll also talk a little bit about um, some of the dangers of lead paint that go with buying reclaimed wood uh, or repurposed lumber uh, which is really popular these days uh, and a lot of people just kind of forget the fact that if they're looking for reclaimed or antique wood um, that there might be a health hazard involved with the lead paint so we'll get to that next, but we'll talk about two things today, and the first one's just going to be how to build a little mini barn. Um, now, as you can see, I also built a larger style barn <laughs> in the bed form for my daughter, who will not give up on her barn and horse theme. Um, and I guess my next project after these two style barns is going to have to actually be a real barn, which we haven't gotten to yet either. So. Let's take it down to a smaller scale today and just talk about how to build a child's uh, barn. So with anything you're building, as always, you're going to uh, consider where it's going, where the location that it's going to go is, and also your scale. So for example, what's going to go inside your barn. Um, and of course, in this one, we're going to have some briar horses. So um, we're going to pick out the horses or some some. Uh, version of horses that she wants to put in here. So we have a kind of a good idea of how big our barn has to be. Um, now, of course, she would have liked this to have been twice the size, but, you know, it still has to fit through a standard door, and I still have to be able to carry it. <laughs> so unless you're getting help from somebody on um, <clears throat> moving whatever it is you build, um, again, you always take into consideration where it's going to go. So, of course, this went in her room. So we did not make, or I did not make, the width of this any bigger than, well, this one is uh, under two feet wide. So, of course, that's going to fit through a standard 36-inch door, or, you know, interior doorway. And then, well, and sometimes that's 32 inches with door jams. It just kind of depends. So make sure you measure your doorway that it's going through, so it'll fit at least one direction. And this one I built to... What is it? That's about 30, <clears throat> 33, 34 inches wide, um, so, or long. And then the height we did on this really just kind of had to do with um, the tongue and groove pieces that I used. So, like I said, this is 100-year-old or older lumber um, that I bought from somebody that they took off an actual barn up in North Dakota. Um, and I had... Well, I have a ton of it, but I only had a little bit of the red. So I only had enough to, like I said, build this size um, barn. But these are, you know, standard 1x6, which is not actually 1x6. It's 5 uh, and a half, 5 and a quarter inch tongue and groove, which is what most of it is. Um, so most of the height on here just had to do with how high I wanted to go up with um, each TNG board. So the height on this turned out to be about 21 and a half inches tall. So again, that really doesn't have anything to do with uh, how we're moving it. It was really just making sure it went through the door. So, um, and then the second thing we wanted to do on this kind of a barn was make sure that, um, you know, it was open and it had some access. So we just put some hinges on the roof and then also did some hinges on and some hooks on just one little piece on the bottom. Now, as you can see on this piece of wood, this is getting pretty old. Um, you know, some of this was actually starting to uh, rot and splinter a little bit. Um, and you can see where the old nails were in this. So, you know, when you start sanding boards like this, um, you know, if it's really looking too rotten anywhere, uh, then you're not going to use them. So there was maybe, you know, 10 boards out of 50 uh, that I had in this batch uh, that I really just couldn't use because... 100, year old, 100 years old or not, it was just starting to rot. So you do want to be careful uh, when you're using your boards to make sure they're not actually rotting. And then, um, you know, going back to this lead paint thing, you can see where this is starting to chip. Um, now, th and this was sanded. 
And again, I'll talk to you about the lead paint story here in a minute. Um, but what I will have to do on this is polyurethane this because, like I said, even though this has been sanded and pressure washed um, and even washed with hot water, some of this can still come off. But I wanted to show you um, how I built this before I polyurethane it because this is what it looks like um, after that paint has aged. You know, and you can see different levels of how that paint has aged. Some of it is, you know, actually turning into chips and some of it, you know, stayed on there pretty good. So kind of different levels of how that paint deteriorates. But I wanted to show you that before I polyurethane it because you won't see that much of that once it uh, gets a, like a sealant over it. Um, but anyway, let's just go back to building this. So um, first thing you do anytime you start building anything is you're going to start with your base. And again, that's just kind of determined on how many boards you're going to use and the doorway that it's going to get through. So we have one, two, three four or five boards wide and um, you know make sure again like I said when you do your boards maybe like I did on the inside it doesn't have as much paint um, and especially with kids um, again we'll talk about this lead paint danger in a minute but um, I really wanted uh, to for her to have at least uh, the least amount of contact with the actual paint itself regardless of how how many sealants I put on it so for the interior we turned the boards upside down and used kind of the non painted sides um, just so there's actually less exposure of that um, old paint to what she's actually touching or they're actually touching so the inside we turned the boards over the other way and again like I said we started with the base and then your next step for building this is going to be building up your sides so on this one we went two boards up two boards high on the front and the back and then on the sides there we have one two three let's see what do I have one two three four boards high on the sides but if you just start with your two bottom pieces all the way around and, and these two pieces as well just start building your your boards up um, which is kind of how you want to do it with TNG because you just kind of don't really know how those are going to fit um, because you know they're just not going to fit perfectly especially with old boards so again we're kind of building this up as we go and then you know just adding the V uh, top two pieces here last so again just start with your base you know two boards high all the way around um, then do your little V piece up here the next two pieces so two pieces yeah um, and then you might want to go on the inside after you get it at least that high and just put in some uh, supports just kind of like an interior frame um, most of this I just did with one and a half inch screws so um, you know even all this the corners the four corners that are screwed in together are screwed in really tight but I would go back just because it's an older um, material and put some kind of like a little bit of an interior frame on the inside after you've got your walls built up so there's your beginning of starting your barn and then after you get all four of your walls up you can start placing your roof boards so your roof tongue and groove here so we went one two three boards high on the back and then you know leave a little bit of a lip over the edge there I just did the same thing on the front and this, again we just put one board on there stationary and the other two with hinges so that it can be opened and they have access to it and I guess if you want to put some hooks on the side of this too just if you're in the event that you're worried that's gonna fall fall down you could put some hooks on the side here somewhere um, just so like again like I said it doesn't fall on anybody's fingers so um, there you go pretty basic and then you can come around into the inside after you have um, the basics of your barn built and start putting in your stalls so again that's really easy they're just they're screwed into the walls at first and then attached to some other wall or any other piece that you can screw into so um, like I said I used one and a half inch star bit screws just because they're nice and sturdy but if you want it to look better and you just want to use some uh, finished nails you can do that too but I was kind of concerned about um, this being real sturdy because it was such old wood um, you know so there you go it's pretty easy stuff um, and then you can go back and add some fun stuff like some little coffee hooks coffee cup hooks or some bigger hooks uh, for the kids to hang their 
little tack items on. Um, you can get real crafty with this. I've seen some really neat ones on the internet uh, where some of the moms or uh, some of the other little crafters in the household made little uh, feed bags and stuff to hang, you know, or feed uh, bins, you know, just like a real stable. So you can go on and on. Like I said, this is just the basics for what to do with your lumber. Uh, and you also just want to decide how many horses they want to get in this. So, you know, my daughter wanted like a dozen horses in this. <laughs> Uh, but I think the most we're getting is one, two, three, four, maybe six-ish, half a dozen horses in something this size. And this is pretty big. Um, so unless they're using smaller horses, they're just not going to get that many in there. Um, and then, of course, she also wanted me to add on a tack room <laughs> to the other side of this barn, which may be the next project where um, if I do want to add, like, another little second room, I can just butt it up to this and leave it separate. Um, and, you know, and you can keep adding little rooms to it or whatever you want to do. Um, but she just wants this bigger and bigger, and, you know, in that case, it would have to be done in sections because it's already getting too big. So, and then, you know, you can go and cut out with a jigsaw your windows, like you saw on the other side, or doors, or anything else you want to get fancy about, and maybe put some trim on those windows or doors, or and or even build some kind of little um, actual doors which we didn't get to yet. So anyway, lots of fun possibilities on these little barns. It uh, doesn't have to be 100-year-old lumber. It can just be brand new TNG um, or plywood. Uh, but again, I didn't really want to do a lot of painting on this. So we will polyurethane what we have and call it a day. Um, so let's talk about um, some of the dangers that have to do with uh, lead poisoning. So basically how it works is anything prior to uh, 1978, uh, and again, that's almost 40 years ago, um, most likely contains lead paint, and especially exterior paint. So for example, a barn paint like this, and, and it's, it's in white and it's in red, it's in every color. It's not just in white paint. It's the base to just about all exterior and a lot of interior paints that they used prior to 1978. Um, so like I said, that's 39, 40 years ago. Um, I have used lumber that I knew for a fact was maybe 20, 30 years old. Uh, but then I started sanding this, um, and I started thinking this is way, way older than 20, 30 years old. So anyway, I called the guy back that I bought it from. Um, and this, I think the white wood was like 109 years old, and this was like, the red wood was uh, 90. Or maybe it, it was the opposite of that, but whatever. Definitely over 40 years old. Um, <clears throat> so what you want to do when you're working with materials this old, uh, no matter what, make sure you get a mask, a construction mask on, um, because it's the cutting, it's the sanding, and it's just the touching and handling of that dust um, that's dangerous for whoever's working with it. So again, I know people love this kind of lumber, uh, and they you know try and create these vintage pieces, uh, but the biggest danger of that lead dust is not only to the person working with it, uh, but it's for children. So because lead paint has uh, uh, mostly it goes directly to the nervous system and causes brain damage, it's a bigger danger for children uh, because that's pretty irreversible. So you know people buy. Uh, you know, old homes that, you know, the walls are painted uh, with lead paint and all kinds of stuff. And that is some major uh, remodeling they have ahead of them because, uh, like I said, besides the people that are working with those materials, um, if a child ingests, which would mean basically like chewing on a piece of wood, so let's just say you have a crib from your great-great-grandmother or even your great-grandmother and that baby's chewing on the paint uh, on that crib, you know, on the railing that's a lead-based paint, that's a danger, and then um, also them inhaling it somehow. So ingesting and inhaling are the two main dangers for uh, lead poisoning. So, but it is absolutely more dangerous to children. So again, uh, I put a face mask on when I was cutting this, when, definitely when I was sanding it. Uh, I washed my clothes immediately when I was done, my bibs and my jackets and my gloves and everything I had on and then also uh, swept out the area that I was working in, which was outdoors, and it is better to do all this outdoors, of course. Uh, I, I act, because I could fit this in my bathtub, I actually took it into my bathtub and washed it off in super, super hot water. 
um, because it was still snowing outside and I couldn't pressure wash it. <laughs> um, so I did, like I said, I was able to fit this in my bathtub, washed it off, you know, two or three good times uh, with, a, with a brush as well. Uh, let it dry, and then, as I said, the next step on this is going to be polyurethaning it, or just some kind of a sealant. Um, not so much because of her handling it, but uh, just because this stuff looks like it's still going to flake off a little bit. And then at some point, you know, if that hand widens up in their mouth, then she's ingesting it too. So, um, you know, maybe not ideal materials for children to handle, uh, but if you do it safely and uh, you do it right, you should be fine. So let me show you the test kit that you can buy for this. Um, I just got this at the hardware store. It's ProLab lead surface kit. Um, they also have one, I think, for the air. Uh, but this company, ProLab, has like 10 different types of uh, uh, heavy metal um, and all kinds of toxic environmental hazard test kits uh, that you can buy. Um, and on this one, like I said, what I did, um, you take these little tiny cloths that they give you in here. Well, it explains to you. I mean, it'll tell you exactly how to do it. But you take these little strips, you put a drop of water on these little strips, and then you touch these strips to the paint. And then you're looking for a certain color, and they'll explain that to you in the kit. Um, but basically what happened was I tried to do it on the red, but it didn't really show up. Um, so I tried to do it on the white. And what I got was a bright pink patch that shows up in this. Uh, so when this touches, when these little pads that get activated with the water touch this paint, um, what you're kind of looking for is kind of like a fuchsia paint color or some version of a pinkish red, um, which of course is hard to tell on a red paint. But sure as heck, um, boy, this had a giant pink patch on it. So that is 100%, you know, got, you're 100% sure that that's got lead paint in it. Um, so, like I said, it's easy to test. You can use this kit for walls and, you know, interior uh, uh, homes, you know, molding and things that you're not sure about, but it worked. Um, so there you go. Just get the lead test and find out, and then, then decide how you're going to handle that material and decide uh, what you're going to do with it when it's all said and done. Um, I'll have another video for you guys that I mentioned on environmental hazards, uh, which include uh, lots of things like uh, uranium and radon gas tests that you can do. Um, I personally live in an area where there is uranium, uh, and I did get my water tested about 20 years ago, but I'm going to get it retested. So as soon as I get my water tested, and I might even be testing the air in my home, depending on what those tests come out like in my water levels, um, I will get you guys another video on exactly how that test came out for me, which has to do with radon gas uh, exposure. And then um, I'll go through a whole list of environmental hazards that are in your home and even, you know, outside your home uh, to consider. So, but again, please, you know, rethink the idea of using reclaimed lumber. Uh, you know, make sure you're testing it if you're using it because a lot of people just, you know, don't understand that. and. And I think it is really up to the person selling you this lumber to notify you as to whether that has lead in it or not. Uh, but of course, you can't rely on whether that person is going to tell you that. Um, so make sure you test any kind of lumber that you buy that has to do with anything 30 to 40 years old. So there you go. Two topics. One was how to build a great little mini barn for your daughter or kid. Uh, and then second, talking about um, lead paint exposure. So another fun project that we'll do a video on is uh, this actual barn bed. So again, like I said, we have the little mini toy barn, and then I have this uh, uh, barn bed that I also built for my daughter, um, which what we're doing is using as just kind of a playhouse in the bottom. Uh, but if you wanted to use that as a second bed, if you had two kids in the same room, you could use them almost like bunk beds. So, oh, I don't have that open, but this opens, and then you have the door sliding back and forth, and then our little shutter doors open and close, too. And then I do have some stairs on this side of the bed that get you up to the bed. So anyway, we'll, we'll do another fun video on how to build a barn bed. Um, so look for that one, too, and then, again, like I said, we may be actually bu be building a real barn at some point, since my daughter is not giving up. So there you go. I'll have a full... Uh, materials list and um, 
how-to list on my website, Susie Homesteader of the Rockies, and a shopping link where you can get some of these uh, toxic tests. So if you have any questions, come and see me on my website, Susie Homesteader of the Rockies, and we'll see you there. Bye-bye. So, let's get started. Subscribe to the Susie Homesteader channel, and we'll see you there. Bye-bye.